Hey there friends, today we are in Luke chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, you want to look at Luke chapter 3, beginning in verse 7. This is the preaching of John the Baptist. And he says, Then he said to the multitude that came forth to be baptized, O generation of vipers. Now that's a way to start a sermon off, isn't it? John is not mixing his punches at all. He's, he's not holding back. He's going right for the jugular, all those little cliche things we say, because he says the ax is already laid at the root of the tree. That's in verse, uh, that's in verse 9. The ax is already. Well, what ax? This is not an ax. This is the ax. This is God's ax. And I think it's in Jeremiah or maybe it's in Isaiah where the Lord talks about the battle ax and how he's going to wield his battle axe. So I'll actually have that scripture in the, in the letter. I wonder if John's referencing that, because it says it's laid, verse 9, is laid under the root of the trees. So he has already put it there. It's like he's lining up his shot. You know when you, when you put an axe up against a tree trunk, you're lining your shot up so that you hit in the right place. Well, that's what happening here the axe is laid there because it's getting ready to get pulled back and when it comes down it's going to cut off the roots and the tree's going to die and John wants the people he wants the people to repent he wants the people to do good works he goes on to say you need to bear good fruit and the people say well what do we what should we do which is the question in this preaching it occurs three different times the people say what should we do the publicans say, what should we do? And the soldiers say, what should we do? And John gives them the thing they're to do. They're to do righteousness. There's a famous passage in uh, the Talmud. It's in the chapter of the fathers. And it says that the world stands on a three-legged stool. Two of those legs, one is Torah, one is acts of kindness or righteousness. And that's exactly what John wants his people to do. He wants them to forget trying to depend on their heritage because heritage doesn't matter if the heart's corrupt. You can't get in on coattails. You can't do well before the Lord by trying to be somebody's child. It doesn't work that way. So he says to them, well, here's what you should do. And he gives them the, you know, his idea of that. And then he says, one's coming after me, whose shoes I'm not able to unlatch. There's that in, in, uh, in verse 15. No, verse 16, he says, I'm not able to unlatch his shoes. He says his fan is in his hand and, his, and he's going to thoroughly purge his floor, gathering his wheat into the garner and burning the chaff with unquenchable fire. So if you thought it was bad with John's preaching, just wait till... The Messiah comes, the Messiah is going to do something that's even more aggressive than John. Because he's going to divide the sheep from the goats. He's going to divide the chaff from the wheat. He's going to gather the wheat into the barn and the chaff he's going to burn with fire. So it's not an axe with the Savior. With the Savior it's a fire and it's unquenchable because he is God himself. So it's a good message for us because uh, you know sometimes we we depend on other people. We depend on our heritage. We depend on... All kinds of things. We think we're good folk because we come from good stock. That's the saying. And of course, that's just not right. Everyone is going to stand before God on their own. And you have to question, you know, am I producing good fruit? Am I doing something that pleases the Savior? Am I doing something that is honoring to God? Well, I hope that you enjoy the passage. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of vinegar. And that's okay, because vinegar has a good effect. So let the vinegar work. Examine yourself. Ask the question, what should I do? And I'm sure you'll be led to the answer. Trust in Jesus and believe on Him. I'll see you guys soon. I love you and I miss you. Bye.